Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in my Dance Dinosaurs Revisit series, where I'll show you some of the models I got fully finished from Dan. Now last time we re-looked at the Dance Dinosaurs Lion Monarch T-Rex. Next up, we have Dance Dinosaurs 1 to 30 of scale Diablo Ceratops. I've always liked Ceratopsians and I think they have a very pleasing bow plan. Um, it's not beautiful the way a hadrosaurus is, at least to me, but it's stocky and powerful. In fact, when I first saw the beasts of the Mesozoic images, what excited me the most was not the actual models, but this picture here. Just look at that form, each one almost the same except just the head. Now I got this Diablo Ceratops during an exciting time when a new Ceratopsian seemed to be revealed in a continuous stream. Cosmoceratops, Medusa Ceratops, Xenoceratops, Nesutoceratops. But I was most taken with Diablo Ceratops because of how badass the frill horns are and even the name itself. Now I liked what Dan had on his website, but I wanted to emphasize the devil by adding red to the frill as well as the quills. And this was exciting because it was the first time I've ever customized a color scheme and corresponded with the studio at all stages of the process, with periodic photos to capture those stages, which I detail in my original review. The sculptor this time is Sean Cooper, and the detail is impeccable, but you really can't divorce your admiration of it from the sterling paint job of Martin Garrett. The head is of course the main event, and more specifically those horns. Now these horns, right away looking at the paint application, and this fade, I mean from the tip to the basis, this was the first model I ever had with such quality that wasn't the size and price of a sideshow. And the execution of the horny parts can be admired here in the beak as well. The devil is in the details, but also the paintwork. And here in the frill, you see how the color just absolutely brings it to life. Just look at the blend of reds and browns. And these little black spots. It's a real conveyance of the idea of pigmentation and not just paint. I remember reading Dr. Bob Barker's idea of Stegosaurus flushing blood into its plates, and this is the impression I get here. It's very nicely framed by the black-brown boundary of the frill. which continues down here. And behind the frill, you'll also see the texturing. On the sides are these individually shaped and painted epoxy pistols, which look really natural. Of course, you don't get the worries about bleeding and sloppiness even in small features like this. The eyes are very carefully painted. The sclera, the iris, and the minute pupil. Now no detail is skipped. Those little bumps that ring the eye socket just add a little cherry to even this small area. So often glossed over in mass-produced dinosaurs. Now, building up a color in multiple washes gives you a result far beyond what you'll ever get on a mass-produced, mass-painted figure. 
Now just look at these blotches. Or mottles on the back. Looking like pigment under the skin. And this pleasing black stripe and how it's blended in. You know, all this just gives you a very organic feel that makes this an actual living animal. Uh, there are these quills here, which is quite a popular artistic embellishment uh, based on the discovery of Sitakosaurus tail quills, which suggests that maybe other Ceratopsians might have had them too. Now let's just take a once over of the whole animal. You can make out the faintest, minutest details, the, the scales, the creases. Just look at that paintwork. That again at this scale looks so appropriate and therefore real. The base isn't as elaborate as in a T-Rex monarch, it is rather understated, with a simple rocky terrain, with just the faintest hints of plant life. But again, the sterling paintwork delivers subtlety you won't see in simple bases. Three footprints help you place the Diabloceratops correctly. And when you put them together, here it is. I think you can see what a piece of work this is, and I'm really happy to have it. It's one of the gems in my Ceratopsian collection, and happily, unlike many of Dan's other models, this one is actually still available. The last time I checked, uh, I'll put the link to the model in my description below. Now these tend to sell out, uh, as I learned painfully when procrastinating about whether to get Dan's Nasuto Ceratops. Uh, so go check it out. Now this isn't a sponsored video, Dan didn't ask me to do this, but I really feel that work like this should be enjoyed by as many people as possible. So go check out what other models that Dan has to offer. The next Dan's Dinosaurs line I'll revisit is the Ankylosaurus. So I'll see you there.